Click the Mix button in the top right, or press Alt-M to go to the Mixer view. Here we can see the tracks we've added arranged in a layout that looks similar to a mixing desk in a studio. If you can see a list on the left, press Shift-L to hide it for now. If you can see the monitoring section, press Shift-M to hide that for now. Now we can see our master track on the right and all our new tracks on the left. Each track, or in this case channel strip, is laid out in the same way. This button allows you to make the track compact. This shows you the color of the track, which can also be seen in the editor view for organization purposes. This button allows you to hide the track from view. If you hide a track by accident, press Shift L to bring the list back, find the track in the list, and click the tick box in the show column. Next we have the name of the track, Clicking on this will bring up a context menu that allows you to change parameters of the track, just like if you right-clicked on it in editor mode. Next, we have the input selection menu. If you're on an audio track, this is where you go to select which microphone channel you want to use to record with. And if you're on a MIDI track, this is where you select an external MIDI keyboard to play notes through. On an audio track, next to this menu, you'll see a little knob that allows you to change the pre-fader gain of your track. If you're on a MIDI track, you'll see a button that allows you to toggle whether or not this track listens to live MIDI input. On an audio track, underneath the input menu, you'll see this invert channel button. This can be handy when dealing with phase issues if you're recording with drums, but for now just leave it off. This big grey area is the effects panel. Right clicking in here will allow you to add external plugins for processing and for synthesizing, and you can add and rearrange as many plugins as you like. I'll come back to this section in a future video. Next we have the panning section. Note that on a mono track, the panning graph looks slightly different to indicate which mode you're using. If you have a track with more than two channels, this panning section will change again to more represent a surround sound mixing space. Next we have the record arm button, which is exactly the same as the one we saw in the editor view to record with. The in and disc buttons are quite interesting. Pressing the in button will enable input monitoring, so if you have a microphone connected, then this will allow you to monitor that microphone through your current channel. Whereas disc will allow you to hear what's actually arranged in your session when you play it back. Normally these settings change automatically without you having to do anything, but if you need to overwrite these settings, then clicking these buttons is the way to go. Next we have solo isolate and solo lock. Normally when you solo a track, Ardor mutes all the other tracks around it. If you enable isolation on a track, then it will stay unmuted when you solo another. If you enable solo lock, then the solo button on that track will be disabled and locked in its current state to avoid accidental changes. Then of course we have the mute and solo buttons, which work exactly the same as they do in the editor, and underneath that we have the fader and volume output. On the left you have a grey slider that allows you to visually change the gain like you would on a mixer desk, with a number indicator above it that also allows you to type in absolute values if you need to. On the right side, we have a meter that shows you the volume of your current channel strip. This also has a number indicator above it. Next we have the automation mode, which is the same as the A button in the editor screen, the group mode, which is the same as the G button in the editor screen, and the metering point. You can leave this at its default for now, but this can come in handy if you want to monitor the volume of a channel strip between separate plugins. I'll cover this feature more later. Underneath that you have the output menu, which is the same as the input menu except it allows you to choose your playback device or a bus you want to send your current track to. And underneath that there is a comment panel. Clicking on this will bring up a small text editor that allows you to make comments and notes on each channel strip. These notes also show up on the track when you right click on it in editor mode. If you want to create a new track while you're in mixer mode, just right click on this big empty grey area. Next we'll add some external plugins so you can start making some proper music.